Hello and welcome to Wednesday's Word. I am Matt Sergeant, and I'm the pastor of Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church in Vienna, Virginia. I welcome you once again into my home, um, and it's great to be with you in the middle of the week where I take just a few moments to share a brief devotion with you. So my prayer is today that you're doing well, and it is so good to be with you today. Well, I've been working really hard on my sermon today and taking a lot of notes and also uh, just reflecting a little bit about what I was going to share with you today. Many of you know that we have been studying as a congregation the Gospel of Mark in the new year. And our adult Sunday school class, our children have been studying the Gospel of Mark. Everybody's been studying the Gospel of Mark, and I hope you are too. Uh, There's even on our webpage a six-week reading plan, so it's not too late for you to start and study the Gospel of Mark with us. It's the shortest gospel of all the four gospels. Uh, You could read it probably in about an hour, but, but also to take the reading plan and to slow down and to just read small portions of it and then maybe sit down and, and reflect upon what you just read and take notes like I've been doing. Um, is a great way to really dive into the Gospel of Mark and into the Bible. Well, as I was studying today, I was reminded of a motif that runs all the way through the Gospel of Mark. There are many motifs, but this one is a really neat one, and it's called, by theologians, the Messianic Secret. Messianic, meaning Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, The writer writes again and again how Jesus wants to keep his Messiahship a secret. Isn't that interesting? I find that interesting that that time and again when Jesus performs a healing or when he casts out demons or uh, when he he, uh, talks to the disciples about his Messiahship, he says, "Now, now, don't tell anyone about me. They all recognized that there was something special about Jesus. By the way, even the demons knew he knew who he was. They're like, you're the son of God. But he says, don't tell anyone. It's an interesting motif that runs all the way through the Gospel of Mark. And theologians have written an awful lot about it. You don't have to go very far to find what they are writing about it. So there's many reasons as to why theologians believe this secret runs through the Gospel of Mark, why Jesus wants to keep his Messiahship a secret. But, you know, I think there are two big ones that at least resonate with me, and I wanted to share those with you. But first, let me share an example of it with you. One of them I read, of course, happens in the Great Transfiguration. And here it is. It's in the Gospel of Mark again, chapter 9, and it begins with the second verse. I want to read all this to you and then uh, just reflect for a few more moments together. It reads this, Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. Note that that's all about Jesus' Messiahship. When when they finally see who it is, it's, it's Jesus, the one. Jesus is the Messiah. But here it goes on to say this. As they experience this, tremendous experience where they were even terrified. Uh, it says this, and, and, and as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. 
He ordered them not to tell anyone. Isn't that fascinating? What they, what they experienced and what they saw? I mean, how could you not want to share that good news? <laughs> well, I want to start with one of the reasons, I think, as to why he didn't want anyone to know. And that first reason is really all about all the healings and casting out demons that he was doing. You know, he was doing so much that he just didn't want to have a popularity contest, if you will. I mean, he, he really didn't want people to just think that he was just a simple miracle worker or miraculous healer. So he would say, you know, don't tell anyone about it. Just go about your life and, and live your life. You've been healed, but don't tell anyone. So it's, it's really interesting because he didn't want to be that kind of person. And what's more, he didn't want to be the Messiah that many people thought the Messiah was supposed to be. And that was the, simply this, that you know many were expecting a Messiah that would come with power and overthrow the governments of that day, such as the Roman Empire, and, and you know rule in that way. And Jesus didn't come for that. Jesus didn't come for that kind of power. What he came for was very different. He came to be the suffering servant. He came to be the lowly one. And, and that's why even in this transfiguration story, when they were shown who the Messiah is, he didn't want them to share that. Because it goes on to say here again in verse 9, it says this, you know, he ordered them to tell no one, what they had seen until the Son of Man had been risen from the dead because they had not yet really understood who Jesus truly is. Oh, when he rises from the dead, that's different. They will see the whole story. But his Messiahship was vastly different from their original understanding. So that's part of it. And another, I think, theme or to this motif, I think, is that is really important is that Time and time again, the problem was that the disciples would get it all wrong about Jesus' Messiahship. Jesus says something to disciples, and it seems every single time they just misunderstand. They just don't get it because they don't have the full picture of who Jesus is. They don't have the full picture of his resurrection. And so time and time again, they get things wrong just as, yeah, we today get things wrong, don't we? Oftentimes, even now, we get things wrong about who Jesus truly is. Humanity, yeah, gets stuff wrong, doesn't it? Even the church often gets things wrong, right? <laughs> so, so Jesus, I believe in this motif here that Mark is writing about very carefully, wants to keep this a secret until the day of the resurrection when they see the whole story of who Jesus truly is. And then, and then they can share about who Jesus is because they'll have the full picture. Don't we need sometimes the full picture to fully understand? So yeah, Jesus didn't want to be seen as a miraculous healer. No, that's not what it was all about. And Jesus didn't want to be misinterpreted as what a Messiah was to be, a, a one who would rule with authority and power in the earthly kingdoms. No, Jesus' kingdom was not all about an earthly rule, but it was more about, you know, about his suffering, his lowliness. And you know what? That really helps us to understand more deeply about Jesus, doesn't it? Because of his suffering, that we too, yeah, we're going to have times when we suffer. That he fully understands who we are and he walks along with us in that journey. That's what his Messiahship is all about. And I think that's why he wanted to keep it a secret. Because, yeah, at that time, and yeah, sometimes even today, we fully don't understand his messiahship. But oh, when we do, when we understand that he has 
risen from the grave, he has risen from the dead, and that we have eternal life in him, well, yeah, well, we understand that. We go and tell, and we share the good news of the gospel. Well, I hope this helped you a little bit. I encourage you to go and study it for yourself. There's a lot of different ideas about the Messianic secret, and these are just a few. But let's now take a moment to go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this amazing gospel. And yeah, help us, Lord, to understand your secret that is found within your son, the Messiah, the real secret, how he came, to be the lowly servant, how he came to suffer on a cross and then rise victoriously. Help us to understand that that's what Messiahship is all about. It's far more than just physical and spiritual healing. It's about having eternal life in him. These things we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, have a wonderful rest of the week, and I look forward to seeing you on for online worship this Sunday at 10 a.m. Take care now, and God bless you.